I wanted to get this up so I can be a bit more concise with doing my favourites videos. Um, so let's just jump right in, shall we? So I'll start with clothing. So the first one is a pair of shorts. These are high-waisted, uh, sort of grey, um, sort of like tracky jogging bottom type material, just a nice sort of thickish cotton. Um, this is literally what I've been wearing every weekend just while we're around the house. They're really super comfortable. Um, I can wear them like today with this like crop top because um, they're high waisted so um, there's a ton of tops that I've not worn in ages because I've not been able to wear my high waisted shorts. Um, so I've been enjoying these and these were from Misguided. I think they were like seven or nine pounds so really really good. Um, I believe they were in the sale so I got those. And then the other pair of shorts I got were another pair of high waisted shorts, you know sort of for proper sort of day-to-day -day wearing out and about. Um, I do have a pair of high-waisted shorts, but they are many, many years old. Um, they're a grey colour. I still like them, um, but they are a little snug-fitting. Um, I have lost a little bit of weight so I can fit in them, but not as well as I'd like, shall we say. So I bought these from H&M. These are high waisted, just light blue denim shorts. Um, they're a nice length, they're not like completely up your ass. Um, they are a reasonable length. These are um, a European 34, which I'm assuming is a size 8. Um, and yeah, I just find them really quite comfortable to wear. And um, again, I can wear a lot more crop tops. Um, the other item of clothing I think is in the wash. Um, I couldn't quite find it, um, so I'm assuming it's in the wash. Um, and it is my NASA t-shirt. Um, if you saw my last haul video, um, I bought two of the same NASA t-shirts from H&M. They were four pounds in the sale. Um, I'll link them down below if they're still on the website. Um, and I loved wearing those sort of the past couple of weekends, um, whether it be just the normal one or um, this slightly oversized one and tying it. Um, I'll insert a picture of sort of how I styled it with these shorts, but I really liked it. so. Those are sort of my clothing items of the month. So the next thing is an accessory and it is my work watch. Um, if you've not seen any of my sort of latest videos, I have recently switched jobs and so now I work in more of a clinical area and we have a nothing below the elbow policy. So I can't wear my rings um, because they've got like uh, studs like diamonds in them. Um, and I can't wear my watch for health and safety and hygiene. So I had to get myself a little nurse's watch. I got this on Amazon. Again, I will link it down below. Anything I can link, I will link down below. And this is the watch that I got. I don't think it was too expensive. It was under £10. You can buy like packs of four or five. So um, if you want to switch it up, but this is the one that I got. So it's just a square little uh, like nurse's pocket watch um it does come out so if you have like interchangeable bands you can do that um but obviously it um it's, it's supposed to be like nurses wards but quite a few people in my department wear them anyway because obviously we can't wear proper watches and it's handy to know the time yes there's clocks in some of the rooms and on the computers but they all vary so i like to have my own watch that is like synced up to the proper time so I know what the time is. Because it's a nurse's watch it has a really really loud ticking to it which can be slightly annoying if you're in the quiet. Um, and also the hands are luminous on this um, so if you're in the dark you can still see it. Um, and um, on the back it does look like it's a bit like a mirror but you can't really see anything. Um, so it just has sort of a badge clip so I just clip it on like that obviously for anyone else it looks upside down but when you're looking at it it's the right way up and I've just been loving this and I've had quite a few people compliment me on this because it's such like a fun colour um, I wanted to obviously get a fun one and one that sort of represents my personality and um, so yeah I've been pleased with that I have one food favourite I mean 
I have a lot of food favourites, let's be honest, but this is the one that I thought was most mentionable. These are the Fibre One 90 Calorie Bars. These are the popcorn bars. I like the milk chocolate ones. Darren likes the peanut butter ones. Um, and these, I believe, are only like two or three sins on Slimming World. And you feel like you're really having a substantial snack. Um, they're a lot sort of bigger than actual like the hi-fi bars you get with Slimming World and they're the same like sin value um, so I'll show you that's the bar size so they're quite quite chunky um, they've got a layer of chocolate on the bottom they've got um, obviously popcorn in it and like rice crispy bits and bits of pretzel and um, I've really been liking these so if you have a sweet tooth and you're looking for a more sort of low sin snack these are what we've really been liking and um, we found them quite a few places on offer as well so and Slimming World do recommend these as well um, as like a low sin snack so those are what we've been enjoying eating let's move on to books I read three books this month I've literally just finished one but I didn't enjoy it so I'm not gonna mention it um, but these are the two books that I specifically enjoyed. This one is The Hypnotist Love Story by Leanne Moriarty. Um, she wrote obviously Big Little Lies, The Husband's Secret. Um, I've read about three or four of her books now. And uh, this is all about a woman called Ellen who is a hypnotist and um, she uh, falls in love with this guy and this guy has a ex-girlfriend who is a stalker and um, that sort of is where it spirals from. I'll read you the back. It says, it takes only a single moment to permanently cross a line. Ellen has made a career out of helping her hypnotherapy clients understand and confront their behaviour. So when she starts dating handsome widower Patrick, Ellen is fascinated to discover that he's been stalked by his ex-girlfriend Saskia. Intrigued, Ellen finds herself longing to meet this woman without realising that she already has. Saskia has spent the last few years refusing to move on from Patrick, and if they're no longer together then the next best thing is to get as close as possible to the new woman who has replaced her. At least then Saskia can be part of their story. But it's a fine line between love and obsession, and when Ellen and Saskia's lives collide, both women must decide how far they are prepared to go in the name of love. So, that pretty much sums up the story pretty well. Um, so, it's really intriguing. You hear from, obviously, Ellen's side of view, but you also have little bits of snippets from Saskia's point of view, and you see sort of the events that have led up to her sort of having this um, troublesome sort of state of mind, and um, how she's sort of convinced herself to um, be constantly um, following these two around and, and being sort of obsessive about her ex-boyfriend. Uh, so I really, really like this. Let's see what I gave it on Goodreads. I believe I probably gave it four out, or five out of five stars. Yeah, so I gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this book. Um, if you don't follow me on Goodreads, then I'll leave my link down below because um, that's the best place to sort of see um, what I'm reading um, and then obviously my direct rating of it afterwards. I don't tend to sort of post much comments sort of as I go along, but if you're sort of wanting to see what I'm reading at the moment, then that's a good place to follow me. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that and if you're looking for sort of a, uh, a romance with a bit of thriller in it, I would say it's more sort of that thriller aspect um, than romance, but obviously it's got both in it. And then the next book is Endurance by Scott Kelly. Uh, this is obviously space and astronaut base. This is non-fiction and it is about obviously the astronaut Scott Kelly and his journey with space and being an astronaut. Um, I thoroughly enjoy this book. I gave it five out of five stars. Obviously, you know, I love space and I've got three or four um, astronaut uh, books and I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoyed Scott Kelly's writing style. I enjoyed learning about his journey. Um, obviously, his journey in training for space, but also he did a year's uh, stay up at the International Space Station to see how um, 
space and gravity has an effect on the human body um, for obviously one day longer space travel to go to Mars. So um, that was really sort of interesting and a unique journey that he's been on. Uh, he also has a twin brother who has also been an astronaut so it touches on that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just, I can't say enough good things about this. And like I said, I was really pleasantly surprised how much I enjoyed it. Every night I found myself wanting to read more and more of this book. And I finished it late one night. And the next day I was like, oh, I need to read some more of that book. And then I realised I'd finished it. And I was like, oh. So yeah, um, and obviously it's got some pictures in it as well. Um, from his journey and his training. Um, pictures of his family, things like that. Um most of it is sort of centered around his journey instead of becoming an astronaut there's not too much um sort of unrelated topics but oh, i really enjoyed this book so if you're looking for a good uh sort of autobiography of um from an astronaut then i would definitely recommend this one um i just really liked his writing style the next thing is sort of an object and that is my new favorite plant I got this from Tesco for four pounds. I'm not quite sure what type of plant it is. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen Darren um, accidentally killed my succulent that I had in the kitchen. It, to be honest, was outgrowing its pot. I'd already repotted it once and it was going getting way too tall for it. Um, and he leaned over to close the window one day and it snapped off. So I bought myself this. Four pound from Tesco. Not only do you get the plant, you've got the pot as well, and it is a really nice pot. Um, and I feel like plants are slightly easier to maintain than flowers. I feel like they last longer if you sort of look after them. Um, so I've got this currently in our lounge, and it's really nice. I love a bit having a bit of greenery, and um, hopefully I can keep this alive. Uh, for the foreseeable future. So the next thing that I've got to show you, and I think it's the last thing that I've physically got to show you, is sort of my knitting. I've been getting way back into it. Um, I sort of took a little bit of a break after my last sort of craft event, um, and I've really been getting back into it. And the latest thing that um, will be sort of my, my new big item for autumn and winter is these um, knitted headbands that I've made. And I've made quite a few. Um, I'll just sort of show them to you, model them. They're not currently on my Etsy shop because we're in the middle of August and there's a massive heat wave. But, you know, come autumn, I will obviously list them up. Um, so at the moment, I'm just trying to, like, get stock ready and just doing some as, like, gifts for people. Um, so, yes, I will show you this one. This one I plan to keep for myself. I, have, I keep knitting them and I'm like... I want to keep that for myself. Um, so I've done a couple scarves in this um, sort of pattern and also headbands. Um, I did two sort of big projects to send as gifts. Um, so hopefully those will be received in the next day or so. Um, but yes, yeah, so I will show you this. So this is what this one looks like. So it's a really pretty sort of braided design and these are those sort of like earmuff headbands I'm not the best person at wearing them but how cute does that look like for the winter um so this is like a grey and white um which I really really like and then I'll just show so I've, I've made this grey one um which is a little bit smaller like um in size but I've been loving them um, and then I'll show you the scarf as well. I made like a matching head um, band and scarf one. And this is with really, really chunky wool. So just like a nice like little snood. Um, and you've not got like all the fabric around you. But it's still like nice and chunky. So I know it's like a billion degrees at the moment here in England. But that is sort of what I've been planning up um, at the moment. Is these like braided headbands and and scarves and I've really been enjoying making them um, so if you are interested head over to my Etsy shop favorite it follow me on my Instagram um, at the British Knitter and um, I will let you know when they go up on my website uh, so that is all that I've physically got to show you now on to sort of um, multi multimedia um, I'll start with the film that we watched we went and watched Mamma Mia 2 this past week and we both really really enjoyed it um, we had a cinema voucher so we decided to go and use that 
and obviously the first Mamma Mia came out 10 years ago so I was like 12 and um, it was really nostalgic and I was wondering how they were going to do it because obviously in the second film if you don't know I mean it's pretty obvious from the start um, Meryl Streep um, her character um, actually passes away we don't know why she or how she's passed away um, but she isn't really in the second film as much and it follows sort of more so her, her child, uh, childhood um, or not her childhood but like her younger years um, and Lily Cole plays that and it shows how she meets all of her different um, lovers and Sophie's fathers um, we really enjoyed it um, I like the fact that most of the songs were different there was like one or two songs that they maybe repeated from the first film like the big big songs but overall like there was a load of songs that I hadn't heard before but they were still really catchy and they fit in really well lyrically with the film and there was points where I was like crying and I don't want to spoil it too much for you if you've not seen it but I really really enjoyed it and would definitely recommend it um, if, especially if you like the first one um, so that was the film we saw we plan on seeing a couple more films over the next month or so what is coming out Winnie the Pooh that Christopher Robin film I really really want to see um, and I'm sure there was another film that's coming out that we want to see I can't quite remember off the top of my head but that Christopher Robin one we really want to see oh there's one coming out in September I think I think Darren said September um it's called Final Score and it's completely different from anything else that I would ever watch and typically it would not be something I watch and it is about um sort of like um a bit like a terrorist attack like in a hostage situation at a football ground um it's got Pierce Brosnan in it um obviously again he was in Mamma Mia um and usually that is not my typical film at all that sort of um male driven like male aimed film um but it was filmed um largely pretty much the whole film is filmed at West Ham's bowling ground which if you know anything about British football we had to sadly say goodbye to so as much as it'll be awful to see like because obviously they they blew up parts of the stadium and things like that it will be very nostalgic and very sort of bittersweet to see the stadium again um, and have it sort of immortalized in film really so that's the other film that we want to see coming up and then I've got a lot of TV programs to talk to you about First one, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We are pretty much nearly up to date. I think we've got the final episode of the last season coming out. Um, we're so pleased that um, NBC have taken it over um, from Fox because when I heard the news that they weren't continuing Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I was devastated. So glad that was picked up by NBC. Um, what else? Orange is the New Black has literally just came out yesterday. So I watched two episodes of that last night already on Netflix. So that is definitely already a favourite. I've been catching up on Little People Big World. I have followed this family in this series ever since it started. Me and my mum would watch it. And I follow them on social media. So obviously I know what's been going on. But it's nice to actually watch the episodes. I've literally had to binge watch the whole season to catch up on. Um, and I think I've only got like one episode left of that to watch. So that has been another favourite. Uh, let's see what else. I'm sure there was another favourite that I wanted to talk about. Other TV show is um, called Sugar Rush and I've watched about f three or four episodes of this and it's on Netflix um, and it's a bit like I want to say it's called Cupcake Wars or something like that that is on like TLC where there is um, like four groups of partners who um, run bakeries and they're all competing for obviously this cash prize at the end and they go through three different rounds. Um, it's very very similar to that um, they get a theme for the episode and they have to make it through three rounds and then at the end someone gets chosen for the ten thousand dollar prize i think it is um but they're a lot more sort of time restraint and the quicker they can finish the round the more time they have left over that can go towards the final round which is like the big round at the end um so i've really been enjoying that it's if you like baking shows um sweet treats that is a good show for you and the final thing which is on my list which i've not talked about in the food section is a new recipe that i've found from slimming world and it um is a macaroni and cheese recipe i will try and insert a picture of it so you can sort of 
freeze frame this if you want to see. It's in their like five ingredient meal book. Um, I literally just took a photo of it at our Slimming World group. Um, and it is like a Slimmer's macaroni and cheese. I love pasta and especially macaroni and cheese. And to have like a more sort of lower sin option is great. Um, it's really easy to make. Um, I can literally summarise it to you. Like I said, it's only got like five ingredients. So it's the macaroni. You can put, um, we put kale in with ours. And we also add bacon just as something extra. But you can add obviously whatever you want. And then you add a tub of Philadelphia Greek um, the garlic and herb pots. You have one of those from our tray, but you can also substitute Greek yogurt into it um, and a bit of Parmesan cheese. Once that's all cooked, you can either leave it like that or you can put it under the grill and let it sort of bake for a little bit, uh, which is what we do. And it probably takes half an hour, 45 minutes. It's really simple that we can do it at home. Once it's in the oven, you know, um, you can sort of leave it and do other things. Um, so, like I said, I'll try and insert it. If I can find a link to it anywhere, I'll link it down below as well. Um, but it might just be in that book, so I will try and insert that picture for you. Um, but we've that's like our new favourite recipe that I've been making. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this favourites video. Um, August is right around the corner. It probably already is whilst you're watching this. Obviously August is a very special month because it's my birthday and it's my mum's birthday and my cousins and my grandpa's. So a lot of birthdays in August um, and we're obviously going out for my birthday. Me and my mum are going shopping to Bista Village so maybe a haul from that and hopefully we're going to do something for my mum's birthday. Um, so yeah, Darren's mum's coming down and she's bringing the dog so a lot's going on in August so that's why I've been trying to do a couple videos this morning so I can get these sort of pre-recorded and then ready to upload. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've had any favourites from this month and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!